Take a look at these incredible moving pictures. My name is Nolan Michaels, I've generated more than 1600 mid-journey videos in the last few days and I want to tell you what works best. On every image you'll have the option to auto animate, which means the bot will do its best to make your picture move. But if you want something specific to happen, make sure you click on manual. I suggest sticking with low motion because the results seem to be a bit more stable and predictable, but don't let me stop you from trying it on high. You got to experiment, right? Anyways, we want to click on manual low motion and this will load your image into the prompt box. Now, do you delete your prompt and rewrite it, or do you simply add on to it? I'm here to tell you that it kind of does not matter, but you seemingly get vastly different results. I'm going to try to explain, okay? I can point out one thing in particular that's going to happen. The longer your prompt is, the more variance you'll get within the grid. And I have two examples to show you here. A fierce warrior in intricate armor, the background is a winter forest. I created this 73 weeks ago. If I wanted to see this warrior point their swords at the camera and I only included that direction in the prompt, we get these. What do you think? I actually really like this one over here. I mean, I think they're all kind of great, but do you see how the bot kind of followed the same blueprint for the beginning of each motion? He sort of raises his arms in the same way every time. At the start, at least. Remember that this prompt included just the direction, not the original prompt at all. Watch what happens when we include that same direction at the end of the original prompt. I think we get four much more distinct options. Do you see how the starting motion is different between them and they all end up in a different place? Again, I'd say this one is the only one that worked out the way I was hoping for. But do you see the variance that appears when we have a longer prompt? especially when we add our direction to the end of the original, rather than just including what we wanted to see in the video. But let me show you one more quick example, okay? We have this lady standing in a field of tornadoes. I wanted to see what would happen if she got struck by lightning, okay? What's Midjourney gonna do with that? If the manual prompt only mentions that, we get these. Kind of intense, right? And maybe you like those results. Maybe that's what you were looking for. Again, I'm not really saying that one of these prompting strategies is better than the other, but they are certainly different. Let's look at what happens when we include that direction, the woman is struck by lightning, at the end of the original prompt. We get these instead, like isn't that wildly different? Because the rest of the prompt is portrait close up of a woman surrounded by swirling debris, a chaotic tornado in a field with lots of debris, three tornado spouts are swirling in the background cinematic feel, a woman stands completely still and calm in the middle, the woman is struck by lightning. Because we kept our original prompt there, the rest of the scene seems to come alive, and the lightning sort of happens at the end of it. Keep that in mind when you're manual prompting. You might want to try both, just the direction you're looking for, and adding the direction to the end of your original prompt. And then here is the truth. The best tip I have for you so far, when you're manual prompting, you can actually generate your videos in style raw. This is a huge game changer, okay? The differences are quite extreme. Type dash dash raw at the end of your prompt. That's all you have to do. But you should know you can't find this in your settings. You're gonna have to type it in the prompt yourself. Let's go back to our warrior with the swords and just look at the results. I think these are quite different and I really like this one over here on the left side again. They're all cool, like you gotta try style raw. And again, maybe you want to keep your original prompt intact because look at these. Whoa, right? Aren't these crazy good? I mean, one of them. Here, fine, let's look over here on the right. Doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything. But then the ones on the left side, number one and number two, just crazy good. Number one especially, like that is so cool. And I think you could argue it's all because of style raw. If you're wondering what that is, it's just a slightly different version of Mid Journey, and it's supposed to improve your accuracy, help the bot follow your prompts more closely. So when it comes to animating an image, that's gonna be important. Check out our woman in the tornado example with style raw. Freaking cool. These are pretty sweet. It is hard to describe what's happening. I mean, the difference between style raw and the regular algorithm, but there is a difference, right? Same thing here with the longer prompts. Take a look at those, the lightning sort of pops in near the end, except in number four where it's kind of going all throughout, and I think that is so good. One more example, we have a sci-fi mecha assassin flexes triumphantly without style raw, and they're all sort of similar. 
Again, it's a relatively short prompt, so the variance between them is going to be a little low. And then with Style Raw, we seem to get a bit more variance, which means that three out of the four are not good, but number two there, I like that a lot. I think that's the best one so far. And again, I would give credit to Style Raw. Now I have to ask you for a quick favor. If you've learned something new so far, would you mind clicking the like button on this video? I want to share it with more people and I need your help. Thanks. Now, what can we do with these raw prompts? Well, Alex in my community suggested we use a prompt like 360 degree rotation to get our characters to spin around. And it worked. That's the crazy part. I think it did a really good job. In fact, we didn't even need style raw. This worked on the regular version. But you'll notice the character doesn't always spin fully around. That's when you're going to want to extend the video to give Midjourney more time to complete the action. So hover over any of them and you'll see Extend Auto or Extend Manual. We already have the prompt 360 degree rotation, so we could just Extend Auto. And we'll get something like these, isn't that unreal? When you're extending a video, there's definitely not going to be a lot of variation. But maybe that's not going to be your concern? I don't know. Just remember that little tip when Midjourney doesn't get your full action within the first generation. For the record, with bigger movements, you might even want to try motion high. But as you'll see here, the camera and the whole scene gets a lot more motion. That's basically what it means. So it's a bit of a more dynamic shot. Our character does spin in a couple of them, but maybe not fully around. Again, you'd have to use the extend feature on the one that works best. I even found that you could use a phrase like the warrior spins around in a complete circle to get that same effect. Now, the rest of these generations did not work very well, but speaking in that more sort of natural language, when it works, it's high quality stuff. Now let's try some body movement. If you have a nice shot of a character, they might behave a little erratically sometimes. That's using my original prompt and like, maybe number one is okay, but I'd say the rest are kind of unusable especially in motion high like i don't know maybe those would be good for your situation so don't let me knock it but i do have a suggestion for you if you have a character and you're looking for some subtle movement i suggest trying something like the word shimmy the woman shimmies this worked great with style raw as well like look at these isn't that so unreal don't those look so natural all four of them in fact i think you could use in a music video like it's not distracting the movement looks pretty good. Same with these, I like those a lot. It's subtle, it's effective, shimmies. And if you want to learn about tips like that early, you should take a look at my community over on the school platform. Check out the link in the description below. Another thing you can try is the phrase act natural. Look how good this is. Isn't that wild? She plays with her sunglasses, moves her hair a bit, natural move in body. The woman acts natural. It sounds silly, but don't forget to try that one. It even did a great job with this girl, especially on the left side, number one and number two. Look how discreet the movements are. Supernatural, in my opinion. Not supernatural, supernatural. <laughs> and now I have a challenge for you. What can we prompt for to keep our subject's mouth closed. Like take a look at number three here. I have not been able to figure this one out. I said the woman shimmies silently. That didn't work. I tried the woman acts natural with her mouth closed. Didn't work at all. I don't know how to just keep them straight faced. Maybe we could try it like maybe with a straight face? No, definitely did not work. So the challenge stands, how can we achieve that result? Please leave a comment if you know how. Moving on to another big video prompting philosophy, and that is speed. The speed at which your actions take place. And I'm going to make this simple for you. It's either slowly or quickly. Obviously, that's a spectrum. You can go a little farther with your vocabulary, but slowly and quickly will get the job done. We saw this girl behave quite erratically earlier, and now check out the woman shimmy slowly. It doesn't necessarily put it in slow motion either. It just slows down the pace of the movement. I thought these results turned out great. Again, it's not slow motion, it's just someone shimmying slowly. Very subtle, very effective. In contrast with the woman shimmies fast, and you get these, I mean, just so you know, the same type of movement can be adjusted greatly when you mention the speed. Think slowly to quickly. And then when it comes to camera movements, I had little to no success. In fact, the only attempts that ever worked were for a simple zoom and only if I included some sort of speed in the prompt. Like take a look here, zoom in did not work at all. The camera stands still. Same thing with zoom out. 
no success. But when I tried the camera zooms in quickly, I did get some semblance of what we were going for in number two and number three, top right, bottom left. The camera does zoom in on the character. Camera prompts, frustrating to use. If you're going to try them, make sure you include some sort of speed with the prompt. I tried the camera zooms in slowly and it kind of worked in number two, but again, not the other three, so take that for what you will. And then I want you to check this out. Instead of using traditional camera words like zoom out, I kind of described what happened as in the camera moves away from the subject slowly and look like it kind of worked. So consider describing what you want to happen when you're prompting for that camera movement. For the record, I tried pans, dollies, tilts. I couldn't get any of it to work. Again, if you know how, please let me know in the comments below. And one last tip, if you want a static camera completely still or as still as possible, Possible. The only trick I found was to mention something else in the scene. As in static camera, the plants blow in the wind. That kept the camera still. Everything else, the camera started to move. There is no built-in feature to control the camera, so these kind of things are the best we can do for now. One last time, I'll beg you, please use the comments below to let me know any tricks I may have missed, and I'll be sure to mention them in a future video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to learn more as I explore this new mid-journey feature. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.